As you know, everything we have done in our study of electromagnetism can be summarized elegantly in only five equations, the Maxwell equations and the Lorentz force law. Now we've discussed the previous three equations. The fourth, the fourth equation is the Ampere-Maxwell law. The Ampere-Maxwell law says that currents create magnetic fields. Now we know that weeks ago when we studied the Ampere law, but now there is an addition. Not only can currents create magnetic fields, magnetic fields can be created by a changing electric flux. And for our studies, the change of electric flux is going to focus on how an electric field changes through an area bounded by a closed loop. So let's do an example illustrating the Ampere-Maxwell law. A 2.0 centimeter diameter parallel plate capacitor with a 1.0 millimeter spacing is being charged at the rate of 0 0.50 coulombs per second. What is the magnetic field strength inside the capacitor at a point 0 0.50 centimeters from the axis? For this problem, we have to find the magnetic field inside or in between the parallel plates of a capacitor at some point along an axis. Now the thing is, we know how to find the magnetic field when we're given a moving charge. We know how to find the magnetic field when given a current. But now we're in a region of space in which we have to find the ma magnetic field. And there is no charge in this region of space. There is no current in this region of space. So how do we do it? Well, we're going to do it by turning to the Ampere-Maxwell law. Because remember, a change of electric flux will induce a magnetic field on a boundary of a surface. So let's take a look at this by sketching a picture. Let's go ahead and depict the parallel plate capacitor. So here is one plate of our capacitor. Here is another plate of our capacitor. Our capacitor is attached to a wire that carries a current I to the capacitor plate, thereby charging the capacitor. So this lowercase q is going to represent the charge of the capacitor as the capacitor plate becomes charged by the current. Well, we know that there is going to be an electric field established in between the plates of the capacitor. This electric field will go from the high potential positive plate to the low potential negative plate. We know that the plates of this capacitor has a radius of R, capital R. Well, in fact, they give us the diameter of a plate. We know it's a two centimeter diameter plate which means the radius is one centimeter. We know the spacing between the capacitor plates. We will say the spacing is D. D is one millimeter. Now, why this is a useful value to know is by knowing that the capacitor spacing is only one millimeter, we could assume that the electric field in between the plates of the capacitor is uniform. Since we could assume that it's uniform or, or approximate it as a uniform field, that will allow us to easily find the electric field between the plates of the capacitor. So remember, 
for a parallel plate capacitor whose separation distance is large, or I'm sorry, whose separation distance is small in comparison to the size or the area of the capacitor, that electric field can be given by the surface charge density over the permeative permittivity of free space. Now the surface charge density, remember, is just charge per area over the permittivity of space. So what we have here is an expression for the electric field in between the plates of this capacitor. Now the area of this capacitor is pi r squared, which ends up being pi d squared, the diameter squared, over 4. So the electric field at for a given level of charge on our capacitor plate is equal to the charge on the plate pi d squared over 4 epsilon naught. Let's go ahead and rearrange this so we can work with it more simply. This is just simply 4q over pi d squared epsilon naught. Now it's important that we get an expression for the electric field because our goal is to find the magnetic field at a point a certain distance away from the central axis of the capacitor. Well, if I draw this dotted line as the central axis of the capacitor, we want the magnetic field at some distance away, which I will call lowercase r. Now that lowercase r is equal to half a centimeter as given in the problem. And if we want to find the magnetic field at that point, let's go ahead and create an Amperian loop that is concentric with the central axis or is centered about the central axis. And this Amperian loop bounds a surface. And it's this surface that the electric flux is measured with respect to. So this surface here, I will call this the surface A sub little r. So that's the surface area of that surface. And being a circle, we know that this expression is going to be pi little r squared. Now, now why we are finding the area of that Amperian loop, it's because we have a change of magnetic flux and we want to find the magnetic field at a point on that loop. And so using the Ampere-Maxwell law, we have the line integral of the magnetic field along a loop that binds or bounds an area is equal to mu naught times the current through the loop through that area plus epsilon naught times the change of electric flux through the given area. This Ampere-Maxwell law equation tells us that a magnetic field can be created by a current through a loop or by the time rate of change of magnetic flux.